Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here and welcome back to another video today. As you can see, there's no graphics card inside the case, but we are looking at the Intel HD 4600 integrated graphics. Now, I know you might think that's a bit bizarre, seeing as I do have quite a number of graphics cards that I want to test. But hopefully over the next few videos you will see as to why I wanted to do the integrated graphics. So it's always something I've been quite curious about, you know, how will the integrated graphics cope with you know modern day titles now is DirectX 11 compatible so it's compatible with everything we're going to try and also it doesn't cost us anything so it's got a zero cost so we'll see how that does now let's get into the benchmarks to start off with we are looking at Skyrim now I managed to run Skyrim on high settings and it did fairly well across the board actually I should have probably not started with this one because it makes it seem a bit <laughs> um, like it's gonna do better than it is but you know you got to remember, Skyrim's an older title. Yes, I do have some of the mods installed, but you know it's a good few years old now, and it's not the special edition at all. So um, yeah, even so, you know if you just bought this computer, could you play Skyrim on it? Yes, you could quite happily as well. To be fair, um, you probably want to lower the settings to get 60 FPS, but other than that, it does the job. I can't really complain too much on that one. Kicking things up a gear, we're going to look at Fallout 4 now. And the results are more in line with probably what you would expect. It's basically unplayable on any resolution at the lowest settings. This is going to start to become a trend, by the way, in most of the games we're going to talk about. But we have to judge it on its merits. You know, it's taking, um, you know, its RAM from the system RAM and... It's, it can't be overclocked at all, so it's running off the CPU. Now I must say the recordings are slightly worse than they are from the actual game, because obviously I'm using the resources from there for the gameplay, um, for the gameplay as well as the recording. Uh, the Witcher 3 was, for all intensive purposes, unplayable. I did manage to move around and run up and down the beach and everything, but it was pretty much a slideshow, effectively. Anyone who was expecting better than what I actually got, well, unfortunately, you're a bit deluded, and you're expecting things that you are just not going to get. Um, so this was not a surprise to me at all. Uh, i got to say, you know, this is the most, probably one of, if not the most demanding game that we have currently, I would say, to get, you know, proper good frame rates out of it. But it did run, and it did play it, so I guess... You could class that as a win? Well, we'll have to, really, to be honest. Looking at Shadow Mordor now, and the you know the footage doesn't really do it much justice. It wasn't as choppy as it is showing, but the gameplay experience was still not great at all. Um, this is not a game you would want to be playing for any length of time on here, and you would seriously need to consider purchasing yourself a graphics card if you, if you want to play Shadow of Mordor. Pretty much the same with The Witcher, but not to the same uh, extreme. Now, this game has always surprised me, or it has so far in my benchmarks. It's uh, Red Out Enhanced Tradition. Edition? Tradition? Edition. It is definitely Edition. And it doesn't actually play that well at all on the HD graphics. I thought, you know, we might get a decent gameplay out of it. You know, it doesn't seem to be massively in intense, but... It is, oh my goodness me, I did horrendous, like the whole gameplay footage that I recorded on here was just bad. I mean, I'm not good at the game by any stretch, but yeah, just so difficult to try and control. The next game that we're looking at is, is Grid 2. Now this is a really interesting one because it is actually sponsored by Intel uh, HD Graphics. So I thought, well, we should be getting some pretty good frame rates then. And actually, it did pretty well. I mean, I know it's on the very low settings and... Unfortunately, this is Intel's one of more, one of their more higher rated integrated graphics, but you could easily see how it could this something like this could run on a on a on a laptop with a decent CPU and integrated graphics, and it was actually perfectly fine. It was the best game I tested by far. You want to play Grid 2? You'll get by without even having a graphics card in your system. So we've got the uh, end times, Warhammer end times in the background, but here's just a list of all the other games that I tested out on it. Uh, this is them all at 1080p. Now some of them did well enough that I didn't include them in the 720p slide. But as you can see, you get a mixed bag. Like Left 4 Dead is actually really playable. Even though you may not think it is, but it, it ran okay. Rocket League runs like it does on the PS4. Toxic and CSGO are also playable as well. But not brilliant. 
So you have to sort of bear with it, to be honest. Uh, Smite and MOBAs and everything seems like they would run really well at 1080p or 720p if you're willing to drop the settings just a little bit. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, I've got to say. It did a lot better than I thought. I didn't even think we'd be able to even run some of the games. Uh, Total War Warhammer was, n was not really a pleasant experience at all either. And now... We're going to get in to the usual synthetic benchmarks that I do. Now these scores are comparable with other things of you know similar graphics performance. Nothing really too shocking there. But anyway, there you have it. That was the zero dollar effectively <laughs> or zero pound CPU. Just take took all its memory off the um, off the off the RAM and. You know, fully powered by the by the CPU. It's not designed for this sort of thing. It's not an APU with you know more enhanced graphics. There's nothing in the PCIe slot. I am going to be looking at other stuff. And basically, to be honest, the HD 4600 was is there for a comparison for future videos, which may lead you to understand what is coming up very soon. <laughs> anyway, guys, hope you just enjoy the video. And if you've got any comments, queries, leave them down below. I'll see you all on the next one. Goodbye, guys.